Okay. I had the door open about this much, and they came from behind me and slammed the door closed and threw me against the vehicle and then put handcuffs on me and told me I was under arrest. Can't be recording in here, first of all. Oh, we can't? Nope. Okay. We were trying to get um, uh, Stacy Ball. Are you the... recording right now? You have to turn that off. It's private property. It's, it's pretty shocking that in 2020, a mall, a public space that's open to people, that uh, has an obligation to ensure that the people inside of this facility are safe, doesn't have any video surveillance. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Thunder Bay, Ontario. And folks, I'm with Arrow and Carol Jensen. They live here in Thunder Bay. And on July 15th, they came here to the Intercity Shopping Centre. And you're just to do a little bit of shopping. And then what happened? Uh, then we uh, went to go sit on the steps. And within minutes, the security guard had come up. To us. Security guard said we couldn't be sitting on the steps because it was uh, against the law. Now, now Arrow, um, the reason why he was saying that, I, I suppose, is that the food court was still closed down due to the Wuhan virus. It hadn't reopened yet. And I guess they didn't want people loitering around. But you are dealing right now with prostate cancer. You get tired. So you weren't there to, I don't know, camp out. You were just there to take a little break before you resumed your journey into the parking lot. He had no empathy at all for your uh, predicament. Nothing. He just um, was targeting Carol. And I said about the mask, and I said, that's the worst thing you could be doing is wearing these masks. I mean, you're cutting off your oxygen. And I said, and I need all the oxygen I can get, you know, in my condition. So then we got up and we started walking out. And as we were coming towards the exit, I was walking ahead of them. Apparently he had uh, hollered out to Carol that, well, Merry Christmas. And he said that we were banned for life, the two of us. And he said that we have to uh, vacate the premises. And we just said, that's fine, we're, we're leaving now. And we proceeded to uh, cross the, into the parking lot to head for our vehicle. Now, surely this must be the end of the story. Oh, but there's another epilogue because you went to your new uh, Buick SUV and you were, and it should be noted folks, uh, you have a handicap parking sticker, you are parked in a handicap space. And lo and behold, that security guard was not done with you yet, correct? That's correct, he wasn't done with us yet. Okay. I had the door open about this much and they came from behind me and slammed the door closed and threw me against the vehicle and then put handcuffs on me and told me I was under arrest. And then I had been saying to him, call the police, call the police, because I was, you know, trying to, you know, get away from, from it, eh? And I got thrown against the vehicle, I don't know how many times, and then because I got thrown this way and I got thrown this way. Certainly these must have been very powerful throws. There was $2,500 worth of damage done on your vehicle, wasn't there? Yes, there was. Yeah. There was just two behind, behind me, but then there was, a, they, they had called a third one that he had heard of, and then there was three, and one of them, I don't know which one, was saying, throw her to the ground, throw her to the ground, and I'm, and I'm. And you've shown me some photos of some severe bruising and scrapes uh, that, that you endured from that day, but why do they want to throw you to the ground? I don't know. What did you? feel like what was your reaction when you saw your wife being manhandled this way i felt horrible but i figured if i react on this i will end up in jail but i said <laughs> i have to keep my cool and not say anything or do anything to these security guards they had they're gonna do their thing and carol asked me to call the police and the one security guard already right then says, we already did. Yeah, and now here's where the story gets even more bizarre. The police come and, oh yeah, folks, there was an assault charge laid against Carol. Uh, Carol, uh, how do you connect those dots? <laughs> well, I didn't know what, when I was told I was charged for assault, I didn't know what for. And then I was told because I spit on the security guard. And did you spit on the security guard or anyone else? No. Okay. No. No. And now, of course, uh, an interesting twist, which we just learned recently, is that um, malls like the Intercity Shopping Center, they have um, surveillance video. 
And you just heard from your local Thunder Bay lawyer, Mr. Richard Garrett, um, in the process of disclosure, lo and behold, there's no videotape. No, there isn't. As far as no. he knows, there was no videotape. You actually have to go to a police station and get mug shots and fingerprints, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. In the aftermath of this, um, has anyone from the mall or the security guard company reached out to you? No, not at all. We, we didn't even know what company the security guard was until we found out later on. It, it's Garda World. Okay, interesting. And I should say, folks, we have reached out to the general manager of the mall for several days now. None of our calls have, uh, have been returned. We're going to go in. Let's see if the general manager or anyone else in the administration uh, can somehow justify what happened to the Jensen's last month. Excuse me, sir. Hi, I'm David Menzies with Rebel News, and uh, I'm just doing a story about the Jensen's. I'm really sorry, I just joined one week oh, back. One week ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you weren't even here in July. Yeah. Okay, then. Would there be? Um, would do you have a colleague here, maybe, that we could talk to, or? Okay. Thank you so much. Hi, sir. My name is David Menzies with Rebel News. And I'm... Um, can't be recording in here, first of all. Oh, we can't? Nope. Okay. We were trying to get um, uh, Stacy Ball. Are you the... recording right now? You have to turn that off. It's private property. Okay, so... Do you want to go outside? Code of conduct. It's on the door here. Okay. Do, do you want to go outside and... Uh... Look at the door. Okay, I, I believe you. know it's private property, but... If you want to look here, you, just can't, you can't be recording in here. Okay. And it can be confiscated. Oh, all right. Well, we don't want that, so we'll we'll make our way out. Can we have an interview outside, sir? Or, uh, What's it regarding? Uh, on July 15th, there was a couple called the Jensen's, uh, and they were roughed up and banned for the mall for a year. Um, allegedly, uh, Mr. Jensen was sitting on steps. I, I don't know if you were involved in that incident or not. Does that ring a bell? Or? We can discuss that. It's currently way above our bigger. We can't stop recording. You can't, you can't discuss it? No. If you'd like to contact admin, then they can speak about it Monday well, through Friday. Who, who's admin? Administration. Oh, yeah. I, I've been phoning. Um, we're based in Toronto. We flew all the way out here today. And I've been phoning uh, Miss Ball for three days now, and she hasn't returned my call. So she might be on vacation. Oh no, no, she's she's here. But <laughs> I, I know that. But um, so th that's why you know I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm just no, I know. But you, you'll have to uh, you'll have to contact her, and then if she says that we can speak about it, then we'll set up an actual interview. But other than that, we can't speak about it. Okay, I'm only trying to reach out and give you your side of the story because uh, we've interviewed the Jansons, and we will be interviewing their lawyer. So. I mean, if you have another yeah, you, story. Yeah, you can call you can call Inner City Admin or you can call the uh, Garter World off, head office in Toronto. Okay, we'll have to do a phone interview because we're leaving tomorrow, so I and, don't know if she's... And that's fine. Okay, then. And do you know the security guards who were involved in the incident? Yes, yes I do. Oh, okay, then. So you have knowledge of this story, then? Yes, we do. Okay. And is there anything that they're... Can't speak on. You cannot talk about it. Okay. One last question. You have surveillance uh, cameras here. And evidently, their lawyer, going through disclosure, couldn't get any surveillance footage to review because there's an allegation that she spat at one of your colleagues. Um, do you know why the surveillance didn't capture this incident? Well, you'll have to take it up with Stacey. We, we can't discuss that. You know, David, it's, it's pretty shocking that in 2020, a mall a public space that's open to people, that uh, has an obligation to ensure that the people inside of this facility are safe, doesn't have any video surveillance. I'm having a hard time believing it, but we'll just have to see what happens. And Richard, is there anything I might have missed that you think is relevant to the Jansen case? Well, um, what's important to know is that um, the mandatory mask order that took place in Thunder Bay, um, it's only been in effect since July 27th. And it's very interesting that Carol was told that by the security guard that she had to wear a mask. Um, I think it's important for people to understand that mandatory mask orders, in light of the pandemic, um, they're very divisive. You know, the, the government and the district health unit here in Thunder Bay, you know, they're expecting frontline workers like security guards and cashiers and employees at coffee shops to enforce their order. And look at what happened to Carol. Now she's caught up in this whole mess. But in any event, we are going to crowdfund because I'm sure when people hear the, the details of this story of decent law-abiding folks like you doing some shopping in a mall 
and you end up getting beaten up, your vehicle ends up getting, what, $2,500 of damage? Um, that is beyond the pale. So what do you think about that, the, the idea that we're going to crowdfund this case so that you two get some justice here? Thank you very much. I am very grateful for what you are doing here, and I hope this gets out to the rest of the country for this injustice. Uh, and just thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Like I said, folks, if you want to uh, kick in some contributions to Fight the Fines, please go to fightthefines.com. And because, uh, Richard, this is an important case. This is an egregious story. And we just want to make sure that we can raise uh, the funds necessary so that you can bring justice for the Jansons. Absolutely. And thank you very much, David. I just want to say thank you to everybody out there who's contributed to the Fight the Fines movement. Uh, this is a, a very important cause, especially in light of the pandemic hysteria like David is talking about. There's a lot of people like Carol who are suffering because of this craziness.